should now have uh, our uh, brain uh, connection <laughs> pretty uh, close to happen. So let's see if uh, Ariel Garten from Interaction is, uh, is, is with us. Ariel, can you hear me? Welcome, Ariel. Thank you, Loic. Um, so you've been here uh, at the web, yes. what was it, two years ago? Two Just years ago and then last year. Come closer to me, Ariel, please. Ah. Um, two years ago? Two and years you ago. announced your product here. First, we told you about thought control technology and all the things it could do. Last year, we told you about what it could do for you. And this year, shh, we have a product announce. Great. I can't wait. All right. Show us. Fantastic. So at Interaxon, we create exciting new experiences using thought-controlled computing. Some of you may be asking, what is thought-controlled computing? Well, it's much like what it sounds like. It's the ability to interact with objects and devices directly with the mind. I have slides, too. How do we do that? With an EEG headset that reads your brain waves and then sends that EEG data to your applications for a variety of interactions. The Internet of Things refers to that emerging space where objects, devices, and places can be uniquely identifiable and connected to one another, exchanging information and enhancing their capabilities. When Loic and Geraldine invited me, they suggested, what better thing to have connected to the Internet than you? As we all anticipate more things becoming connected, we see brainwave technology playing an instrumental role, helping to add a more human element, element to your communication with spaces, places, and objects. When physical places can sense your individual needs, it can add dimension and increase relevance to your experience. For example, if your vending machine knew something about your activity and health, it could suggest the best or moderate the deliciously worst food for you. The technology that we at Interaxon are creating can allow for customized response to your cognitive and emotional needs in real time. In the age of the Internet of Things, our age is to continue to create tools and technologies that put humans first, so technology can support and reflect all the things that are just so awesomely human. When I was first here a few years ago, we shared with you what thought control technology was and all the things. in the world that you can control and interact with, with your mind. Last year, we showed you how the technology could take you on a journey inside yourself and connect you to the contents of your inner world. This year, we're bringing the future of thought-controlled computing to everyone. This is Muse. Muse is a four-sensor EEG headband that measures your brainwaves in real time. It connects wirelessly to your smartphone or tablet, allowing you to engage with thought-controlled applications anywhere, anytime. It allows you to interact with things in the digital and the physical world directly with your mind. It's slim and it's sleek, and it slips on just like a pair of glasses. Muse is simple and elegant. And since it connects to the fancy little device that most of us have in our pockets every day, your cell phone, you can use it anywhere you want. This is really the first thought control device that's stylish and easy to wear, bringing BCI finally into everyday use. And you are all welcome to try it for yourself and find your Muse. Muse comes with the apps that we've developed, as well as an SDK so you can develop on our platform, too. We really wanted a democratic device. Because although we do some pretty amazing things, we're still aware this is very much stage one technology. Muse is just the start. And in the future, you can expect new software pieces and new and exciting functionality. We invite everyone to help unlock the potential of the technology alongside us. The first area you can build in with Muse is this idea of control. 
controlling a simple parameter of a game or object with your mind, which is, of course, really fun. The second and possibly the most transformational arena is self-discovery and the mastery that comes from knowing more about yourself. It offers like a window into your brain's activity, allowing you to actually see and track to your brain activity, and then allows you to reflect back on your brain's activity over time. So you can actually tangibly and see your cognitive and emotional performance. You're, you're making the invisible visible, and then allowing you greater understanding and control over it. So you can reduce stress, improve memory, or learn to be more responsive instead of reactive. The third area of interest for us is context. The ability to add context, i.e. your human context, to information, actions, and interactions. So in the internet age, this is one of the things that we've really initially lost. And I'm going to give you a glimpse of how you can put your personal context back into your online communication. We call this emotype. Email and text messages are something that we encounter on a daily basis. You can't go a day or a night without checking your stupid email. When email first came out, it was totally befuddling and frustrating because we'd lost all that contextual information that's contained in our voice and gestures. If an email was in a short sentence, you didn't know if the person was angry at you or just in a rush. So we developed workarounds, of course, adding exclamation points to emails at that limited palette to say, it's OK, I'm typing quickly, but I still love you, ooh, ooh. We now pile on exclamation points as emotional meters. We add emoticons, these stupid little cartoon faces next to our text, to try to indicate the feeling that we had at the time as writing. It's one of the ways that we try to share ourselves and communicate beyond simply what's written on screen. With Muse, you can now add context directly into your messages by creating subtle inflections for what's written in real time. Now, Loic is very excited to be trying this for the first time. I, I am. OK, do you want to sit here? I sit wherever you like, uh, Ariel. Just let me know. So Loic, this is your muse. Oh, thank you. Just slip it on. Yep, just like that. I'll take mine off. Like this? Just like that. It's the first time I do this. Just believe it or not, but <laughs> you should believe it. OK. <laughs> so. Oh, do we use this, actually? OK. Yeah. Nice. How does How it do feel? I look? <laughs> it feels, um, yeah, you don't feel it much. Awesome. So what you're going to be doing is typing an email using your brain, or rather using your brain to add context to that email. Oh. Sure, that, I do that every day. OK. I actually think we've <laughs> lost our Bluetooth connection, though. The Bluetooth here really sucks. All right, there we go. Oh, is that my brain? That is your brain. You're showing my brain on stage I'm like sorry. this? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right, blink your eyes. Blink my eyes? Yeah. Yep, there you go. We're getting little bumps when you blink your eyes. Yep. Which bumps? <laughs> oh, what? Here, you can oh. see them here. <laughs> That's pretty scary to me. Okay. <laughs> awesome. So what is it, what's it like to be looking inside of Loic's wait, head? Wait, wait, wait. Why is it going up now suddenly? There you go. The Bluetooth signal here is really bad. So does it so start here Bluetooth just to, to understand what happens here? What, um, what is so that's, we're just seeing a copy of the screen. So this is everybody seeing what's on your desktop here. Yeah, but I see two of them. Yes. So that is uh, the same thing as over there. We're just okay. showing everybody big what it looks like inside your mind. Oh, I get it. OK. OK. So now what you're going to be doing. Now what this huge peak, what is that? <laughs> that huge spike was you going, oh, I get it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So what we're going to be doing is uh, Lloyd's brain is now just connected. Just touch me and that did another one. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so um, Lloyd's brain is connected to the internet currently. And he's going to be typing an email. And this email is going to change depending on his brain state. When he's focused, the text is going to be clean and tight. When he starts to relax or dream, it's going to get flowery and serifed. And when he has adding emphasis, like he's smiling, it's going to get big. Do you think I'm going to get 
uh, what did you say? Like, I'm going to go into you know, a peace of mind and totally relaxed, I think. I don't know. Uh, let's see. So let's you want type. me to type this? Yeah. Sh type whatever we... you want. Anyone? Yeah. OK. Well, let's, let's email Geraldine then. So obviously, when he thinks about Geraldine, it's sort of like, ah, oh, Geraldine, it's nice and flowery. Keep typing. I like the emphasis on amazing this year. I love this stage setup. <laughs> I, I'm prolific. Awesome. No, You're no, good. I just keep writing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what's oh. up? <laughs> <laughs> so he is really proud of her. And he begins to sort of dream of Sheldon. <laughs> <laughs> and become. Oh, oh look, I, I become. <laughs> oh, successful is very, like, very, we must be successful. Uh, wow. Um. <laughs> Fantastic. So, <laughs> shall, we, shall we send this email to Geraldine? Yes, how do we do that? There's a send button here. So, but tell tell me, so, so you change the character based on how I feel? Based on your brain state. So the, when it's italic like this and all crazy, it means, um, means what? So when it's italics and crazy, it means that you are in a higher alpha wave state. Uh, that's one of the factors uh, wait, that we use. A higher alpha wave alpha state? Alpha wave state. Okay. So um, alpha wave is uh, more relaxed and more creative and open, if we want to make broad generalizations. So I got, I got 10 seconds of that. Yes. The rest of the time, I'm totally boring and. Well, no. Um, so when the text gets really small, you're very focused. So you're very closely engaged in what you're doing. You're paying attention to it. I'm not focused. Keep going. Because <laughs> oh, you're laughing. There you go. I... OK. You got it. You got, let's see if I'm very focused. Was pretty darn focused. So let's send this. Oh, I sent this already, right? All right. Do we have Geraldine? Oh! <laughs> what? She received your email. Wow, that's nice. It's huge. <laughs> 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 now you need to rock the stage, Loic. Um, that's cool. So, congratulations, Jarlene. It's a great setup this year. It's just a start. <laughs> so this is cool. So is this a, uh, how do you, so is Geraldine also connected? No? Geraldine just received your email. So you could actually send this email to anyone you wanted. Yeah. You could type emails to anyone, send them out to anyone in the crowd. Um, sure. And share a little part of yourself. You don't have to do that right now, though. So how, um, Geraldine? Yes. Um, this is um, this is this is great. We should we should get one. So can so, let's see. Give me applications apart from from the, Thank you, Geraldine. <laughs> yeah, I'm still thank proud you. of you. It was not. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have, this no, is but really, we have an amazing team. Yeah, really. Yeah. So thank you for uh, thank you to all our team. We're so fortunate to have them to put this together. This is pretty uh, pretty incredible that you all came. But uh, I, I mean it. So now. My waves are I'm probably going all crazy. Thanks, Ali. So um, this was just a very basic demo. Yeah. Um, we wanted to specifically for the web show you a way that you could be connected to the web and you could add additional information. You can imagine over time adding context and emotional information to your avatars in a game, to location-based services, to. Um, if oh, so I could, for example, go faster with my uh, like as I'm gaming with my avatar if if I'm. 
trying to control it with your brain? Sure, or you could add emotional context. So what if it was a game where you had to be, you know, a shooting game, for example, not that I advocate shooting games, where you had to be very engaged and focused, and your avatar could actually respond more effectively when you were really in the zone. Is there any or, uh, professional applications you see? Um, there are lots of professional applications. With athletics, for example, we're working with the um, Canadian Olympics team to help mm -hmm. them improve their, um, their position at the Olympics. Shh. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, that's for whom you can say, <laughs> don't tell anyone. <laughs> How much uh, is that? It's 199 bucks. Oh, that's reasonable. Yes. Very, actually. So and it's available now? It's available now. You can get it on Indiegogo. And they're delivering in spring of next year. Excellent. So Muse comes shipping with games that you can play directly with your mind, with a brain fitness suite so you can improve your cognitive and emotional health, um, and then with an SDK so you can develop whatever you want with it. So, so there's an API that I can... Of course. Connect my brain. That's pretty scary what people will do, uh, will do with this. Um, so where do they get it? In, uh, they go on Indiegogo and they, do, um, they search for Interaxon? Yes, it's Interaxon Muse. It's called Muse? Yes. This is the Muse that you're holding. The Muse that I'm holding. Ariel, this is so uh, futuristic and, and at the same time very present because it's available now. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a few of them myself. But thank you so much for launching this year. And, um, and coming back, and, uh, and I hope you come back again to see what developers have done with it. Oh, I'm very happy to, because I can't wait to see what everybody's going to do with this. Thank you so much, Ariel. Thank you. I give it back to you? You can wear it if you want. I, oh, the whole stage. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Thank Ariel. Thank you. Au revoir. It's so nice to have you. Thank you, Ariel. Congratulations. Thank you.